Yes. <laughs> A classic tape measure trick. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. You see, last week I featured a video that had a couple unique measuring devices that I was really impressed with. So I thought it might be a good idea to make a trip over to Home Depot and Lowe's and see the latest in tape measure technology, if that's even a thing. And I ended up purchasing five new tape measures. So let's take a deep dive into tape measures and I'll show you what I got. So first off, I was pleasantly surprised at what I found at those two big box stores. I saw a lot of tape measures with some features that I'd never seen before. And let's face it, how often do you browse the tape measure aisle? Oh, I don't even know what half of these tools are for. The last time I purchased a tape measure, I purchased one online, and I purchased the Lefty Righty made by FastCap. And that's because it seems like every single YouTuber and their brother are using this tape measure. The left or, or the right. Yeah, it's darn cool. But I didn't just buy that lefty righty tape measure. I bought the whole lineup of fast cap tape measures and I'm sort of glad I did as each one of these tape measures has some unique features of their own. And I've been a fast cap fanboy, probably a little bit too much. I'm your number one fan. But what I came to realize when I went to those big box stores is there's some tape measures that those fast cap brands just don't have. And that's what we're gonna go over today. We're gonna take a look at all my tape measures and I'll show you some of the unique features of each one. So let's get started and take a look at those tape measures. I believe this is what they call a good old fashioned tape measure flex. It was a weird flex and I get a lot of joy out of it. These are all my tape measures and yes, I have way too many of them. But if you're anything like me, you're gonna lose them all the time. In fact, it was really hard to find these tape measures so that I can show them to you today. But before we dig into the details of these tape measures, let's start it off simple and go over the anatomy of a tape measure. So there's really not a whole lot of parts to the basic tape measure. There's really only six parts. That's the case itself, the belt clip, the thumb lock, the blade of the tape measure, the hook and the nail and screw grab. If we look at the blade of a tape measure, you'll notice a couple of markings that are a little bit unique. You'll notice a marking at every foot, and you'll also notice a marking at every 16 inches. And this is used to frame out buildings. Now this tape measure goes down to 1 32nd of an inch, which is a little bit unusual. Most tape measures only go down to 1 8th or 1 16th of an inch. Another common feature with most tape measures is that the hook wiggles a little bit, and this should wiggle 1 16th of an inch. This is so that you can get accurate measurements on two different types of measurements. It's this movement of the hook that allow you to get accurate measurements whether you're hooking it or whether you're butting it up against a wall. So now that we have an understanding of the form and functionality of the tape measure, let's take a look at some of the first tape measures I ever purchased. And one of these tape measures I actually inherited from my dad, so it's quite old. So all of these tape measures are tape measures that I purchased before I started woodworking. And this tape measure right here is one that I inherited from my dad, so this one is the oldest. One last feature that you'll notice with most tape measures is a listing of the width of the case. In this instance, this is three inches wide. So if you're measuring in between two walls, you can take your measurement and add that three inches. You could do so much with three inches. Pretty much anything. If we look at the blades of some of my first tape measures, you can see that each one is just a little bit different. Some are just imperial. Others have imperial and metric on the other side. Others have the fractions of each one of those hash marks so that you can get an easy read. And some of those tape measures went down to a 16th of an inch, while others went down to a 32nd of an inch. But there is one thing all those tape measures have in common, and that's that they're not completely accurate. Now this is a little bit difficult to show, but here you can see I have a straight edge running across the blades of each one of the tape measures, and it's set to one foot exactly. Now each one of these tape measures reads just a little bit differently. In fact, between some of the blades, there's as much variance as one eighth of an inch. And this is why it's crucially important to pick a tape measure at the beginning of your project and stick with it through the entirety of that project. If you go back from one tape measure to another, you're gonna get some variances between your readouts. Well, that's probably the biggest deep dive I've ever taken with tape measures. Now let's take a look at the tape measures I purchased after I started woodworking and the ones I still use today. So this is how I roll today. That's how I roll. These are the tape measures that I use on a daily basis in my shop. Now you will notice that most of these tape measures are made by FastCap, with the exception of the small one made by DeWalt. 
Now the tape measure that I use the most is the one with the red X on it. And this is a fast cap lefty righty. Now the red X was put on there so that I don't lose it. However, this is the tape measure that I tend to lose the most. So let's first take a look at the features of each one of those fast cap tape measures and then we'll take a look at the DeWalt. So as I said before, my go-to tape measure is the lefty righty made by fast cap. And these typically come in 16 foot and 25 foot lengths. Now all these fast cap tape measures have a couple of features that are unique to the fast cap brand. They work just like many other tape measures with the thumb lock on the very top. But there's actually a secondary lock and that's on the very bottom. If you press this button on the very bottom with your index finger, you can temporarily lock that blade into place and release it when you want to. Another nice feature that these fast cap tape measures have is a white area on the face of them. This allows you to write down your measurements on that face so that you don't forget them. Lastly, all fast cap tape measures have a pencil sharpener on the very corner of them. Now this is a feature that I never use because I always use mechanical pencils in my shop. So let's quickly go over the features of each one of those tape measures and I'll show you what they do. So let's start off with the lefty righty. As the name implies, it has readings on both sides of the tape. This allows you to easily read your measurements whether you're standing on the left hand side or the right hand side of that tape. And this goes down to 1 16th of an inch. The next tape measure is the old standby, and this is about as simple as it gets. This goes down to 1 16th of an inch, and with its larger imprints, this is very easy to read. The next tape measure is the curvy cousin of the old standby, and that's the old standby flatback. And that cousin reads the same as the old standby, but as the name implies, it's a flatback. This allows you to easily wrap it around curved surfaces so that you can get those exact measurements. The last tape measure in the fast cap lineup is the yellow one, and this is the metric standard. And once again, as the name implies, it has imperial on one side and metric on the other. Meter, indubitably. Kilometer, wrong. Wrong, wrong. Kilometer. How dare you make me side with imperialism. Well, that wraps up the fast cap lineup. Now let's take a look at that DeWalt. You more of a DeWalt or a Craftsman guy? I literally have no idea what that means. And there's two features that I really like about that DeWalt tape measure. First and foremost is the size of this tape measure. This thing is only two inches tall by two inches wide, but not only the physical size, but also the size of the tape. This thing is nine feet long, and that's the perfect size for any tape measure. Rarely in woodworking are you measuring anything over nine feet long. Now there's nothing too special about the blade on this tape measure as it is an imperial. Now you will notice that the Stewalt tape measure doesn't have a red X on it and that's because it's really easy to find. On the very back of this tape measure is a magnet and I usually keep this right on my table saw right on the edge of the table. If you're enjoying today's content, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button and leave a like. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for all these tape measures we're taking a look at today, I'm going to leave links in the description below so you can go check them out for yourself. Well, that covers all the tape measures I've been using for the last few years on my woodworking journey. Now let's take a look at some of the gems I found at those big box stores when roaming those tape measure aisles. So these are the tape measures that I just purchased from Home Depot and Lowe's. And I think each one of these tape measures has a feature that's worth taking a look at. So let's start off small and take a look at our first one. So our first tape measure is the six foot tape measure made by Milwaukee. Now six feet is a little smaller than I'd like. However, the size of this thing is really what caught my eye. Now when we compare the size of the Milwaukee to the DeWalt, you can see that it's just a little bit smaller. This thing is one and three quarter inches wide by one and three quarter inches tall. When we look at the blade of this small tape measure, you can see that it includes both imperial and metric. Now the imperial only goes down to one sixteenth of an inch. Now all that's great, but what really caught my eye was the hook on the very end of it. This makes it very easy to attach it to something like your work vest and not lose this tape measure. So whether you're sticking this thing in a pocket or clipping it onto one of the loops on your vest, you're definitely not gonna lose this thing. 
Now our next tape measure is also made by Milwaukee, and it's got a feature that I didn't think was too important until I did a recent video. And in that video, I featured this Slick Hoto tape measure. And there's two features I really like about this tape measure. The first relates to the clip. This has got a dual-sided clip that allows you to hook it onto either side of the blade. The second feature is the auto lock. No matter how far you pull it out, it locks into place and doesn't release until you press the button. And I knew I couldn't be the only person that would love to have that auto locking feature. So I searched the big box stores and I found one made by Milwaukee. So this is the 16 foot auto lock tape measure made by Milwaukee. And as you can see, it's got the same auto lock feature and doesn't retract until you press the top button. Now this tape measure is only an Imperial and it only goes to 1 16th of an inch, but it's extremely easy to read. Let's compare it to that lefty righty tape measure and I'll show you the difference. Now on the right is the Milwaukee. You can see that it has increments and fractions which makes it very easy to read. You can also see by the size of the numbers how much easier this is to read than the FastCat brand. Another nice feature that I noticed with most Milwaukee brands is they're not as tall as they are wide. This can make it much more easy to slide into your pocket. Here you can hopefully see the difference in height between the Milwaukee and a normal tape measure. And I'm really impressed with that auto locking feature and how easy that blade is to read. Now this next tape measure is also very easy to read. I saw my contractor use this tape measure when he came out to measure my barn for my renovation. You're looking for a good job or you're looking for the no-show special? I'll, I'll take the, the good job. And I'm gonna need to be paid in full up front before we start the job. Should I choose to do this, when can you start? Probably about a year to a year and a half from now, of course. So this tape measure is the 16-foot Crescent Lufkin. This thing feels very well made and it's got a lot of girth. In fact, this tool claims you can drop it from 120 feet or 12 stories and not have any damage to the tool. Now all that's great, but I don't do a whole lot of woodworking from a 12-story building. However, that's not what literally caught my eye about this tape measure. Now from this view here, you can probably guess what caught my eye about this tape measure. With a black background and the neon green writing, this thing is a breeze to read. The blade is also substantially thicker than a normal size tape measure. Another nice feature that this tape measure has is it has a dual hook. You can hook it as usual on the bottom of the tape measure or you can hook it on the very top. Now one thing I've always wondered about with tape measures that have a hook on the top is how are you supposed to read it if you're facing the other direction? Well this Lovekin figured it out because there's not only those easy to read numbers on the front of the blade, but they're also on the opposite side of the blade and they're facing perpendicular so that you can read them from where you're standing. So if your eyes are getting bad like mine, this is gonna be the tape measure for you. Would you like to try trifocals? And I'm like, I must have been away a while because I have no idea what you're talking about. So the next tape measure we're gonna take a look at that I got from one of the big box stores is what I like to call a tape measure for dummies. But it's not just a tape measure for dummies, but it's also got some features that are beneficial to the woodworker. And this tape measure is the 25 foot self-lock chameleon. Let's take a look at some of its basic features. So after being spoiled by those last two tape measures, this tape measure is a little bit more difficult to read. However, it does go down to 1 32nd of an inch. But it is a 25 foot self-locking tape measure. So you can pull it out and it will stay exactly where you want it until you want to retract it back. Like a couple of the other tape measures we featured, it does have a dual sided hook. You can clamp it on as usual or you can clamp it onto the top of that blade. Now, unlike the last tape measure that we took a look at, it doesn't have the measurements on the back. However, it does have a wealth of information, and that's what dummies like me need to take a look at. So this tape measure reads like a book on the back of the blade. It's got over seven foot of data that's useful for the common woodworker. Let's take a look at what it says. So the first couple feet of the blade are dedicated to fractions. They give you the decimal readout for eighths, sixteenths, as well as thirty seconds. The next couple feet is data relating to nails. Not only is there a little scale to measure your nails, but there's also a per pound chart for common nails. The next chart relates to wood screws. This chart gives you the gauge of the screw, the body diameter, as well as the pilot hole you need to drill. The next chart gives you some common angles you'll need for plane irons. 
So this will give you the angles for grinding and honing. The next area is all about geometry. It has the formulas for the circumference of a circle, the area of a circle, or the area of a triangle. After that, we have a few conversion tables. You can see conversions for things like a mile to feet as well as an acre to square feet. If you ever forget what type of sandpaper you should use, the next area covers that. I've been charged with murder for killing a man with sandpaper. I only intended to rough him up a bit. It defines what grits are considered very fine, fine, medium, coarse, and very coarse. And finally, it describes the real dimensions of dimensional lumber as well as linear board feet. So here you can see a two by four is actually one and a half inches by three and a half inches. And it's also 0.667 board feet per linear foot. Well, I hope you didn't fall asleep during all this. There might be a quiz at the end of this video. Well, I thought that was pretty cool. This little tape measure's got a lot of data in a small package. Well, we got one more tape measure to take a look at that I got at the big box stores. And this one's made by DeWalt. So this next tape measure is the DeWalt Tough Series. And this tape measure is about as close to that Lufkin as any other tape measure we've taken a look at today. And I think a common theme with a lot of these new tape measures is fat blades and big readouts. This makes them much more easy to read. If we take a look at the Lufkin, I still think this is a little bit easier to read than the new DeWalt. Just like the Lufkin, the DeWalt is dual sided. So when you flip it over, you can see the measurements on the opposite side. However, it stays horizontal and isn't perpendicular. But none of those reasons are why I purchased this tape measure. This thing has a charger, believe it or not. Let me show you what that does. So on the back of the tape measure is the charging port, and this simply attaches to a USB port. So what do you need to charge this thing for? Well, let me show you. On the very bottom of the tape measure, there's a little on and off switch, and this actually turns on an LED light in the very front. And this LED light gives you just enough light to easily be able to read that measurement in the dark. Now the first question I had is how long will that light stay on constantly before it needs a recharge? And this thing will stay lit for three hours. Another question I had is what if you forget to turn it off? Well, this thing has an auto shut off after 60 seconds. Now lastly, since this does have some electrical systems in it, you may be worried about how sturdy this tool is. Well, they claim you can drop this from 100 feet, which is a 10 story building, and not have any damage. So if you do a lot of work in the dark, or if you have poor lighting conditions, this DeWalt Tough Series LED may be the tool for you. Well, that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about tape measures. If you made it this far, leave a comment and let me know how many tape measures you think I have. Well, thanks for joining me today, folks. I really appreciate you joining me on this tape measure journey. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.